And welcome back to Let's Play Persona 3, where, once again, I am probably recording, uh, audio commentary that is incongruent with the audio that I recorded for Reload, uh, about a month ago at this point, I think. Uh, definitely it's been a while, but, uh, before we get into the Tartarus excursion for tonight, I just want to go over that I have updated, uh, my party's equipment to make sure everybody has something that is reasonably good. Also, Junpei and Yukari are pretty close to another level up, close enough that I can get it for them without having to worry about them succumbing to the tired status. So I'm going to take care of that before getting to the boss floor, but know that I'm going to he be heading straight for the boss floor once that's attained. And now we will be cutting to reload to see the Tartarus portion of gameplay for that version of the game. And rounding out our Tartarus explorations, it's time to fully explore the remaining floors of Fable and Persona 3 Reload. It is worth noting that uh, not every Tartarus uh, segment is going to have three bosses. In fact, most of them do not. Most of them only have two. This is just a pure uh, convenience or coincidence that we were able to divide each Tartarus exploration into three distinct segments for this first month in Persona 3. Is that? There's a rare shadow up ahead. Perhaps you can ambush it. And this is our formal introduction to rare forms in Persona 3 Reload. You can't encounter them up until this point, but they are much more worth your while to uh, encounter in Reload, because unlike uh, Persona 3 FES and Portable, well, wh why get ahead of myself? Let's actually get into a fight with it and check it out, uh, and hit everything along the way here. There he is. Wait, is that shadow up ahead, uh... Ooh, he's running! He's making a break for it! Mm. Well, now. That shadow took off like a bandit, didn't it? Those ones are fairly rare. I suppose we can simply call them rare shadows. They can be tough to catch, but the potential rewards are worth the trouble. While exploring Tartarus, you may encounter elusive rare shadows. Defeating them will net you hefty rewards. Rare shadows will attempt to flee if they spot you. They'll keep running until they successfully escape. You'll want to ambush them from behind and strike quickly. Right. Seems you have turned... You have turned... He seems to have turned left up ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Why don't you try tracking it down? So, unlike uh, FES, and more in line with Portable, these guys actually can be caught up with if they make a bolt for it. And unlike... Uh, Oh, whoa, hello. <laughs> Unlike uh, FES or Portable, they will not disappear if they want to run into a wall. They will instead turn around. Now, these guys are always, they have uh, set resistances, and they're always weak to specific skills. Conveniently for the, us, this guy is weak to bash skills specifically. And of course, Junpei misses there. Hopefully, the protagonist will get a hit. No! Ah. Wealth Hand is waiting. Wealth Hand is waiting. This uh, actually is a good opportunity to uh, mention something that I have not had the opportunity to go over. Yeesh, I am having a terrible time hitting this thing. Here we go. But uh, in Persona 3 Reload, when you get a first strike, when the first strike ends, the enemy gets their turn. Unlike in Persona 3 FES and uh, Portable, where the protagonist gets to go again. Okay, he's still waiting. We should have our chance here. So there are actually... Uh, moments early on where it can actually be undesirable to get a first strike on the enemy because uh when they when their uh round of turns comes up again they have the potential to go twice in a row which can be devastating depending on what you're fighting <laughs> That won't matter too much later in the game, but as you saw there, when you defeat a rare form in Reload, in addition to getting the valuable treasure item that they normally drop, you also get a huge amount of experience. So yeah, these guys are excellent to kill. And if you defeat them with all-out attacks, more often than not, they give you shuffle time, so that will allow you to uh, get uh, a good amount of... Uh, ooh, that's unfortunate. That'll allow you to get a uh, good amount of experience or an even better amount of experience if you have a wand available. Anyways, the Trance Twins here in Persona 3 Reload, they are actually weak to Alex skills instead of uh, fire skills like they are in FES and Portable. So we want to blast these guys with Zeo, which fortunately I was able to skill card onto Orpheus. Otherwise, these guys are nothing too, too special. We do have to be careful now, though, because we are uh, getting to the point where the enemies actually hit pretty hard, and it can be, uh, shall we say, detrimental to our health if they actually get a number of actions off in a row. 
All right, what do we got here? Ooh, I could get Fornius, or I could get the money. The uh, rank of cards we can expect to find from the enemies going forward has also increased. Let's go for Fornius. Uh, generally, you should focus on increasing your Persona Compendium. It's a good idea to uh, put efforts towards making that bigger. Indeed, Junpei. Get a lot more color commentary from your party members, aside from the comments they make when they level up. There, we got a magic band, so let's throw that on Yukari, since she'll get the most benefit out of it, being almost a pure magic attacker. As well, we'll want to, uh, just, uh, quickly recover the protagonist's HP. Don't want to be, uh, left out with that. We've mapped everything on this floor. It's up to you whether to continue or not. Thank you for letting me know, Mitsuru. Oh, whoops, sorry, I interrupted Junpei there. I'm detecting another strong foe on an upcoming floor. Another gatekeeper. It'd be wise to conserve our strength. Have you made use of the escape order? A strategic retreat can mean the difference between life and death. You can always regroup and try again. And this is just the game giving us a tutorial on fleeing from battle. Nothing too special there. We've already gone over that in other versions of the game, so I don't really feel the need to go over that in this version. Oh, heck yeah, we get a little block of treasure here. There's, uh, more potential to find treasure on a given floor in Persona 3 Reload. It isn't a set number of two chests per floor, or two chests per standard floor, I should say. Now, uh, here in Reload, we're actually, uh, going over another aspect of the turn order. Your turn order is purely determined by your party member's agility in Reload. They will always act in the order of highest agility from lowest agility, regardless of anything. With one exception, boss fights still follow the old system that, uh, boss fights followed in, uh, Persona 3 FES and Vanilla, where your turn order is determined by the, uh order your party member is slotted in. So the protagonist will go first, then Yukari will go, ooh, we get another persona here, Aramitama. You know what, let's take him. Unfortunately, we are overstocked on personas and we cannot hold any more. We have to make the tough decision to get rid of one of these guys. Uh, I'm going to actually get rid of Pixie because we don't need her. She doesn't have the skill that I wanted her for anyway, and uh, that skill being Zeo, I've already skill carded that onto Orpheus, so we can just, uh, Dump Pixie by the wayside. We've already got a lover's type persona, which in and of itself doesn't really matter too much. We'll go over that more and more as we get through the game. Ooh, the speed band. Let's throw that on Junpei, make him a little bit more accurate. I really like having the small sash that I got on the protagonist. Every little bit of HP we get is very helpful to making sure we survive. Again, remember that your main character, if he falls in battle, that's game over. Alright, so we found the stairs here, and now we can uh, more organically interact with the aspect of uh, Persona 3 Reload's uh, quick travel system, where now I can explore the rest of the floor, and when I uh, feel like going up, I can just uh, zoom in the minimap, select the travel to stair option, and we can move that way. We're also uh, doing much better against the enemies at this point. Stuff from the lower floors, we're just destroying immediately due to a combination of our level increasing and our stats increasing alongside them. Remember that uh, level scaling is a big thing in uh, Megami Tensei games, uh, so you will uh, see a lot more damage independent of your stats going up when you level in these games. We'll hit these guys with an all-out attack, and that will be the battle. I won't be showing off every fight, but we haven't been uh, seeing too much action yet, so may as well uh, go over a few. Ooh, aha. That is one of the new darkness-type skills. In the older versions of Persona 3, uh, light and dark skills only had their insta-kill magics. For something a bit more... Ooh! Sorry, I just saw something good over there. Uh, let's uh, let this guy uh, back up a little bit, and I'll take him out. All right, finishing off that battle, we got a uh, three of coins here. Not really that much of an upgrade uh, of two. Like, when you pick a coin of one in Reload, you get like 600 yen, and then uh, the two gives you a thousand more. Uh, the coin, the three of coins doesn't really give that much more than the two of coins. Like, what, 1,700 compared to the 1,500 we're getting from the two on average? Not that impressive. But here we've got a destructible that when we break it, we get a Twilight Fragment. Occasionally, you'll find these crystallized podiums that have Twilight fragments in them, giving you another means of collecting them. <laughs> I like how I drew attention to the fact that it's not always two treasure chests in a tar in uh, Reload's Tartarus, and that just so happened to be on a floor with only two chests. Over there, we've got a locked chest, and you know what? I've got, uh, I just got a free Twilight Fragment. Teleporters are really convenient. I wonder how they work. 
Listen, you're not supposed to question those mechanics. But because I got a free Twilight Shard, why not open up this locked chest? I mean, I could save for the locked chest uh, on the uh, floor. Ooh, here's the Grave Beetle. This guy, much like the Grave Beetle from the other versions of Persona 3, he is also uh, weak to wind. And this is actually a good opportunity to show off uh, what I was talking about earlier with First Strikes, where in this case, it can actually be desirable to get a first not have a first strike on this guy because if we got a first strike on him he has a pretty high agility and there is a not zero chance that he would have been able to go twice and uh bash the protagonist uh two times in a row which would kill him so yeah that's uh, actually it's actually desirable to not get a first strike against this guy since yukari's turn is coming up let's just hit this guy with the all-out attack if we're lucky we'll, it'll kill him if not we've got another garu uh coming up to uh do a little bit more damage to him and we're going to need it. Now, I actually don't want this to kill him, because if we get the uh, all-out attack on him, we could get shuffle time. But unfortunately, Yukari's a little too powerful for her own good right now. She's come a long way. Also, that was garbage experience. Oh, uh, Yukari, hold up. Uh, just uh, take the... Here, huff this real quick. Look, you look like a million bucks. Anyways, let's open up this uh, locked chest. Alright, cutting here to Persona 3 FES, because I have gotten the beetle shell. That'll be a cool 12k from Elizabeth when I turn this into her. Note that to get the beetle shell, you need to have accepted the request. Otherwise, the beetles will not drop it, so make sure that you do that before exploring Tartarus, once the request becomes available, of course. For our efforts here, we get a Pixie Dust Talisman. Ooh. There's a lot of new accessories in Persona 3 Reload, and I don't remember what every single one of them does on hand. Plus 10 SP, not that great, but it is something we can sell. Speaking of which, uh, what's my money at? 19,000. I want to have uh, 33k before I leave uh, Tartarus. This is where uh, I'll have been getting all that money that I've been using in the social uh, socialization aspects up until this point. Uh, fortunately, because of Arcana Burst, it's actually not that difficult to uh, rack up a ton of money in Persona 3 Reload. Uh, I'd better uh, survey. Okay, yes, Junpei will go next, so we can hit these guys with Agi. Sometimes I uh, do the dash strike uh, at an inopportune time, end up flying past the enemy, and then uh, find myself in a situation where I don't have a first strike anymore. Doesn't matter too much, because uh, Yukari and Junpei's agility is high enough that these guys will not be able to uh, go after... Uh, or uh, go before we can strike their weakness. But still, definitely want to be mindful of that and not do make that mistake too often. Let's see, life drain? Uh, yeah, what the heck. I don't really care about the EXP boosting cards. Uh, the amount of EXP paid out in Persona 3 Reload is much higher in general than the earlier versions of the game, so we don't need the wand nearly as much. Okay, what else do we have coming up here? As always, keep breaking the crystal formations to keep getting more money. Man, those great beetles can actually be surprisingly dangerous just because of how unpredictable they are. Ooh, I actually wouldn't care to get Hama. It'd be an interesting skill, but it's too unreliable in reload and portable to, for me to really consider. So this time we actually will be taking experience, which will be pretty good. Uh, hopefully, uh, nah, I was hoping we might get a level up for Orpheus there. Uh, the scaling on the EXP cards uh, seems to be kind of like, uh, it seems to be closer to how it was in uh, Persona 3 FES and Vanilla. They toned it down a little bit in comparison to Portable. It seems to work on the 20% increments instead of having the baseline doubling effect that the uh, Wand of Growth 1 has in Portable. But, uh, obviously, as we get further in the game, the more and more the multiplier pays off. All right. We've covered everything on this floor. I know, Mitsuru, but I see a mark there. We gotta take him out. And let's just wait for this guy to turn his back to us. And take him out. <laughs> that is one of my favorite lines from Junpei. Anyways, from Shuffle Time in that battle, I got the Stagnant Air card, which lowers ailment resistance of enemies, which is something I don't really care about. Uh, ailments are a little bit easier to use in Persona 3 Reload compared to Portable and FES, but I still don't think they're all that great. Though they do have a distinct synergy with some abilities we'll be getting later in the game. Ooh, hey! 
Every now and again, when you enter a new floor, the game will let you know that there is something of note on it. In this case, it's signposted that there is a rare chest for us, different from the lock chest, and in fact, there are multiple varieties of rare chests in Persona 3 Reload. Hey, nice! It's, uh, the Twilight Fragment podiums are actually pretty rare, so it's always cool when you see multiple of them during a uh, Tartarus trip. Something that uh, hasn't really come up at this point is, of course, in Persona 3 FES and Persona 3 Portable, the floors of Tartarus are randomized every time you uh, leave the Tartarus or go back to the lobby in that game. In Persona 3 Reload, the floors are the same every single time you go to them for a given Tartarus trip. So if we went back to the lobby, all the floors we've explored up to this point would be the same, all the treasure would be collected, and the only new thing would to see would be respawning enemies and the floors wouldn't change until we come to Tartarus on a future night. It's actually not a terrible idea to explore earlier floors on future trips to Tartarus, even if the enemies there are not at all worth fighting, just because you might find treasures that you might not have been able to get previously. Uh, let's uh, get some experience for Angel, why not? Give her a uh, level up every now and again. Worth leveling up your personas simply to uh, make them uh, more valuable in fusion. The higher the persona, the higher of the level, the higher the levels of the persona involved in fusion, the more skills you can inherit. Up to four if they are leveled up enough. So pretty good stuff there. Took the liberty of clearing out uh, the two enemies that were wandering around there, and of course we got Junpei's best voice line again. Before we continue on, I actually do want to use one of our snuff souls on my protagonist, as his SP is getting quite low. If all goes according to plan, we might actually be able to uh, avoid having to use the uh, Twilight Fragments that uh, I collected on the clock again. All right, we got a level up there, and Junpei learned Raku Kaja. The most notable thing for Junpei here, though, is when he hits level 13, he's going to learn Vacuum Slash, a multi-targeting physical attack. This is something that, in FES and Portable, he did not learn an attack like this until, like, level 50. So, yeah, he is, uh, he pulls ahead quite a bit in attacking options at this point in Reload. In general, I'm a big fan of a lot of the retools characters got in Reload to make them a bit more useful. Also, it looks like the map is fully explored. I'll let that enemy live. We're going to be doing some grinding in a bit anyway. One thing that I got from the shuffle time from that last battle is a Bufu card. I'm going to slap that on Orpheus, and now we've got an Orpheus that covers all of the main elemental uh, resistances. And you know what? What the hell? Just for flavor, let's throw Koha on him there as well. So now Orpheus covers all... Uh, all but darkness when it comes to basic uh, resistances. Obviously doesn't cover all physical resistances either, either but between the uh, protagonist's swords and uh, Orpheus's innate bashing skill, we can uh, check two of the three physical resistances as well. Careful. The enemy's nearby. I'm detecting a powerful enemy up ahead. Everyone stay sharp. All right. Salut. I see you're making good progress, and you appear to be getting the hang of things in combat. On the topic, have you been paying attention to enemy weaknesses? Exploiting a weakness will make you hit harder and more often. Doing so can turn the tide of battle. More kinds of attacks you can use, the more chances you'll have to hit a weakness. That's where your ability comes in handy. Thank you for tutorializing for me like that, Mitsuru. So yeah, an uh, interesting turn of events, we're going to start off a boss fight in with the most up-to-date reload version. And following the general trend, the reload version of this fight is a little bit easier than the versions from uh, the versions from FES and Portable. Still, always best practice to save just in case something unexpected happens. Floor 17, you said? Understood. The teleporter will take you there right away. Stay safe out there. Thank you, Mitsuru. I appreciate your vote of confidence. Now, coming up to the boss here. Let us take on... It's enemy territory up ahead. Are you ready for battle? Yep, I'm, as... I'm good to go. Here we have... Yeah. Looks tougher than I thought, but ain't nothing stopping me. This is the... Uh, I think it's the assault drive. 
start off with the FES version of this boss fight, because I feel like it's important for these to show off the protozoan form of the boss every time we face it off against them and see how they've evolved as the game has been re-released. Before we get into this fight, I'd like to equip Aramitama, and this is the one fight I'd say more than any other that if you fused off Orpheus, you will be in for a world of hurt, because not having Cadenza for this fight sucks. So let's hopefully do the best we can. I've gotten level ups for Yukari and Junpei. We're not on the same level as we are in Persona 3 Portable, but the damage range or the damage values that the enemies are going to nail us with are a little bit lower in this version, so it should be good enough. It seems you've attracted the Guardian's attention. Its arcana is the chariot. Starting things off, we want to scan this boss, the Rampage Drive. Now, I don't know if I've made a big point of uh, drawing attention to this, or if I've even mentioned it at all, if I'm going to be completely honest, but when you scan bosses, you don't get to see their weaknesses or resistances, or their HP for that matter. But, in Persona 3 Vanilla and Persona 3 FES, the game does actually subtly slide your party members the resistances and weaknesses of the boss, if they have any, and your party members will react accordingly with that information, which is pretty handy to know. Uh, since we basically uh, have nothing going for us at this turn, what we want to do is hit this guy with uh, Rakunda just to lower his defense. Uh, I should have checked the turn order there. If we're lucky, Yukari is going to go before this guy, and she is not. So she's probably going to be in a bit of a bad situation. Doubly bad situation for us because Junpei uh, decided to use a medicine on, there, on her. When you enter Tartarus in FES and Vanilla, every party member has their own little supply of items that they'll use in battle when they feel like they need to heal their party. So Yukari is dead last in the turn order, which sucks pretty bad because, as you saw there, Rampage Drive has Mazio, so he can knock down Yukari with that. Now, I'd like to stick to uh, Aramitama if I could, but the sad truth is, is that uh, this guy is actually resistant to fire spells, but he takes decent damage from Bufu, Garu, honestly even Zeo. Just anything but fire, which uh, is, you know, pretty unfortunate, because that's the bulk of what we have available for us. There you can see Junpei is using a medical powder. So if this fight is going poorly, what's going to keep happening is this guy is just going to keep hitting you with Mazio, robbing Yukari of the opportunity to do anything, and uh, occasionally wasting Junpei's turn until he uses up all his items. Eventually, Junpei will start peppering this guy with Agi. Note that the boss is immune to Slash-type attacks, and if it gets to Junpei's turn before he gets a chance to learn that information, uh, that's basically just a wasted turn. Other things that this boss can do, he can use the Assault Dive skill, which is actually pretty undesirable. It can deal quite a bit of damage to you. He has a normal Pierce-type attack, and of course he keeps doing Mazio. The other unfortunate thing that he can do... Ah, oh god, Yukari just keeps getting taken out. Okay, Junpei has run out of items, so that's all that he's got there. Now he has to stick to using Agi. Now, our uh, evasion buff from Cadenza is going to run out next turn, but unlike other buff spells in this game, Cadenza actually refreshes its effect when it is cast on top of itself. Most buffs in Persona 3 FES and Vanilla and Portable do not refresh like that. Okay, so he's boosting his attack there, which is unfortunate for us, but uh, it does uh, mean that Yukari at least gets a turn to do something. So if he uses Mazio, Yukari is almost certainly down. Uh, let me just take a look at my items here and see if we got anything particularly interesting. I could use, actually, the Mazio gems on him also. Uh, let me think here. I'm gonna go for another Cadenza here, just to see if that saves Yukari if he uses Mazio. Taru Kaja is really, really dangerous uh, on this guy at this point. Uh, if we were lucky, or not if we were lucky... Okay, well that, that's lucky though, that's lucky, her dodging like that. What I was trying to say is that if we put in enough effort, we could get Orpheus to level 6 in order to get Tarunda onto him to counter that uh, ability, but that just takes way, way, way too much grinding to really be worth it. I'm actually going to switch over to Aramitama here since that gives me more defense, and I'm going to dip into my item supply here. These items are no good if we don't use them, so let's use the Mazio gem. Even though he uses Zeo magic, he is not resistant to Zeo spells. We're getting good luck with the evasion there. That's far from a guarantee, and I'm honestly kind of... Uh, expecting Yukari to occasionally get taken out. One thing that makes this fight a lot more pleasant is that uh, in Persona 3 FES and Vanilla, if he hits the Mazio on Yukari, he does not get an extra turn due to how one more works in this version of the game. 
Okay, so the Assault Dive just outright uh, wrecks Yukari. Uh, do I want to try and bring her back in? Let me see here. What uh, what are your revival options? We've got a revival bead. I'm actually not going to bother bringing Yukari back in. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the Mazio gem here. Oh, man, that sucks. Sometimes, if you're really, really lucky, he will miss that and stumble, and you can get an all-out attack on him to either rob him of... Or, rather, you can leave him to rob him of a turn, or you can take the all-out attack to get a good amount of damage. Anyways, this guy can't deal enough damage to finish me off, so I'm just going to hit him with the Agi Lao. If we're lucky, Junpei will pepper him with Agi here, and that will finish him off. Okay, that didn't finish him off. I'm actually going to err on the side of caution here. Let's uh, go over to uh, Apsaras. Actually, you know what? No. Uh, let's uh, instead... Let's see. What... Items do I- oh, I don't have any other healing items except the bead chain, never mind. We will switch over to Apsaras and do Cadenza, because if my Agilao stone misses, which is a very real possibility, that means I lose. If I uh, just heal myself with Cadenza here, and uh, let Junpei go for another Agi shot, that gives me much better odds. Especially if he uses uh, Tarukaja at this point. He didn't, he went for an Assault Dive, but this is one of the better ways this fight can go. Alright, so, hey, we get a Balm of Life. Not that I'll use it, because uh, uh, we don't, <laughs> that's a bit overkill on Yukari. We get a level up for Apsaras, which I would have appreciated uh, before this fight, because she got some endurance there. But that's neither here nor there. This actually went very well. This fight can go a lot worse, and I'll be honest, there is a little bit of luck involved with this sometimes, because uh, sometimes he can just do all the bad things and really up the damage race. I'm using the revival bead I had on Yukari there, because if I didn't, Mitsuru would rescue her from the floor, but she'd automatically be put into the tired status and would leave Tartarus, uh upon returning to the lobby, or perhaps she'd still be addable to your party and then leave when you return to the lobby. I've never actually returned to the lobby with a party member knocked out. Here we get a Soma and a Bomb of Life, two very good items. Let's check out the other versions of this boss fight. Now, nah, much like the hands fight, uh, this fight... You've attracted the Guardian's attention. Its arcana is the chariot. Yeah, yeah, Mitsuru. Anyways, as I was saying, much like the hands fight, this one is actually not too, too different from how it is in Persona 3 FES, the mechanics changes don't affect it too, too much. But there are still some things to keep in mind with the Rampage Drive here. First off, Apsaras can no longer use Cadenza indefinitely as long as we have the SP restoring items to support it. So that is no longer the optimal Persona to use for this fight. Instead, we would like to use Pixie, who can resist the Rampage Drive's uh, ability to Mazio the party. Yukari, for her part, is just going to stand back and guard so that her weakness is not a problem for us. Oh, I really should have checked to see if he was going to go next. Whatever. Junpei, on the other hand, we're going to have him use the Mazio gems we got from the hands boss fight. That's a consistent 50 damage that he can tack on every single turn in order to, uh, well, for three turns, to get a grand total of 150 damage onto the Rampage Drive, which is a pretty nice thing for us to have going for us in this fight. One thing to note that uh, is not a terrible idea to do, if you can manage to uh, work it into the fight, is to level up your uh, Orpheus to the point where it learns Tarunda. This will allow you to weaken the Rampage Drive and uh, undo its attack buff when it utilizes it. Uh, this isn't super realistic to do in FES, but it's more worth drawing attention to in uh, Portable, since you get enough, exper enough increased experience between the buffed up wands and just the higher base yields from the enemies that uh, you know Oh! Well, uh, <laughs> let me try that again. Alright, round two. This time I got a slightly better turn order with everybody going before the Rampage Drive. There's a fair amount of randomness to the turn orders in boss fights. Generally, your team will act in the order that they're slotted into the party, while the enemy will just have their turn inserted, inserted in a random place in the turn order. So there isn't really that much way to uh, manipulate this, and it does add an annoying element of luck to some fights, where sometimes the enemies will just be able to go at more desirable times in the turn order than you can. Anyways, the Rampage Drive has buffed up his offense again, so uh, 
What I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to use a Cadenza. If he goes for an Assault Dive on the Femsi again and hits it, well, then I just lose again and I have to try until something more favorable happens. This is definitely a moment where uh, grinding a little bit more is probably a good idea. I just don't feel like doing that. You'll note that Junpei has his sprite changed. I got the Shirt of Chivalry for him in this version of the game. Okay, let's see here. What I want to do here is uh, I will just guard... We'll also have Yukari Guard. She might get taken out by the Mazio anyway, but we'll hope that doesn't happen. But uh, Junpei has the Shirt of Chivalry, giving him increased defense, allowing him to actually tank an Assault Dive, even if it's... Oh my god. So yeah, <laughs> we'll go to round three now. Alright, we're on attempt number three here, and I've been having pretty bad luck... Uh, well, not bad luck, actually. Actually, I'm doing pretty decent here. He hasn't used Tarukaja yet, but I am in a pretty rough spot when it comes to HP. Uh, let me think. I'm just gonna have to DM myself and let Junpei nickel and dime this guy with, uh... Augie spells. Of course, if he goes for another Assault Dive and it hits on me, that's, uh, you know, that's just something I'm gonna have to deal with. I might have to grind a little bit, but I'm gonna keep trying to see if I can beat him as, uh, as I am right now. Ooh, nice. That's actually very lucky. Let's uh, re-up Cadenza here to get the evasion buff going. Unfortunately, because I had to use one Cadenza on the Venus Eagle fight, I only have these two to work with, so uh, if things keep going badly in this fight, I might be in an untenable position and just have to level up more. This is actually one area where this fight is a little bit harder than in FES. I would say it's generally easier, but the fact that I haven't been able to go back to... Uh, Tatsumi Port Island and Polonia Mall in order to pick up new equipment to increase my defense means that this fight is just much more perilous to deal with. The fact that this guy is also resistant to uh, Junpei's much more powerful physical attacks and I have to rely on the Wimpy Agi spells really, really hurts me here. Luckily, I was able to dodge with Cadenza here, so if we can keep peppering this guy with shots, hopefully I can take him out before he does anything too nasty. Ideally, the next thing he does here is either two rounds of Mazio, or, uh, ooh, no! I was hoping he would whiff, uh, okay, now we're in the worst situation possible. So, now I only, my only, uh, recourse here is to keep hitting him with Bufu spells and hope I win. Hopefully he does something stupid. Nope, I lose. Alright, so I did just do some hunting for some armor in order to more reliably survive this fight. I got a camo shirt for the Femsi and a rash guard for Yukari, making this a much more reliable fight. It also let me get the rest of the equipment I needed to sell in order to get the money I needed in Persona 3 Portable. With that extra bit of defense, I was able to weather the storm a little bit, so now I can just blast him down in one round of combat. He's also vulnerable to Garu spells, so there we go. Oh, taking care of him. That fight is ridiculously dicey in Persona 3 Portable, as it turns out. This is one moment uh, where being able to spread these uh, Tartarus trips out over multiple nights actually really benefits uh, in Persona 3 FES, because he can come into this way more prepared than I was for it in Persona 3 Portable. The enemy's attacks are growing stronger. If you're being overwhelmed by the enemy's assault, protect yourselves by guarding. If you're guarding, then even if your weakness is struck, you can avoid being knocked down. Try and make use of that in battle. Mitsuru going over the mechanics of guarding, introduced in Portable, of course. Uh, well, technically introduced in Persona 4, but added to Persona 3 in Portable. But I don't really need to go over that, since we've already had that established. The Swift Axel is this guy's name. Anyway, unlike other versions of the game, this guy actually has a weakness in Persona 3 Reload. He is weak to Zeo Magic. That's why I got rid of Pixie. The main re thing I'd want her for is uh, the ability to Zeo this thing. But uh, since uh, we already got that on Orpheus, that's not necessary. And Orpheus, we can use to lower this guy's attack power. So that's what we'll do to make this a little bit easier. When Junpei's turn comes around, I'm actually going to ooh, resist uh, wind. Very unfortunate there. I'm going to put a defense buff on protagonist. So any attack that goes gets directed at him, though that will do. Uh, pretty negligible damage. Here comes Magaru, and he's going to get an extra turn here because he was able to hit Junpei's weakness, but that's not a big deal. 
So let's hit this guy with Zeo, and we're just going to blast him with two Zeos instead of doing an all-out attack. Since uh, Junpei is knocked down, the all-out attack would do low damage anyway. We'll take the 50% uh, bonus to our damage for attacking a downed enemy here. Uh, let's uh, hit Junpei with a Dia here. And then we'll just uh, have him guard instead, since uh, that's the best thing for him to do against uh, the uh, Magutters this guy is going to throw out. Or just the regular Garus. That's actually very uh, nice for us, because I don't have to worry about uh, taking uh, damage onto the protagonist and having to heal him up. Now we'll go for the all-out attack. In general, against bosses, all-out attacks have a better chance of dizzying them than uh, just attacking them repeatedly. Not guaranteed, as you can see, but uh, it's uh, still a decently reliable thing. Want to pay attention to the status of our buffs and debuffs as we use them. Uh, let's see, let's go for uh, Bash with uh, Junpei here. See if this deals good damage. Oh, whoops, I, I should have guarded. <laughs> that was uh, me being dumb. Ooh, that actually takes care of something for me right away. Uh, I was gonna I was gonna check to see if the uh, attack debuff was wearing off, which it should have been at this point. They last for three turns, but now he's just kind of taking that consideration out of my hands, and he lets me reapply it to him. How kind of him. Uh, let's see, uh, what about Pierce attacks? Not really any better than Garu, really. Though if uh, Yukari gets a heavy strike, that would help out. Anyways, uh, the buff on myself is going to be running out soon. You can tell when the uh, buff marker is flashing. But we're playing Persona 3 Reload, where we can just uh, reapply it before it wears off. One thing to note is that those uh, those bonuses are cumulative. You can just keep applying them and, uh, you know, add three turns, three turns, three turns. I don't know if there's an upper limit to it, but still, if you wanted to, you could just keep applying those bonuses up to, like, nine turns, so you don't have to uh, reapply them as they're about to wear off, if that works better for how you order your turns. And I keep forgetting that I need Junpei to uh, guard if I want him to be safe. Again, with the double whammy of Tarunda and uh, Rakukaja on the protagonist, uh, we really don't have to concern ourselves too much with what this guy can do. He is a huge step down in difficulty from the uh, Persona 3 FES and portable bosses, which you'll be seeing in a bit. Don't worry, don't worry. We've, uh, we've got this guy on the ropes, though. Alright. Alright. We'll just have Yukari blast to it. Well, actually, no. It, it makes more sense to have her go with the physical attack. Even if it's a uh, lower damage, there is a chance that Yukari will crit. And if she does, that'll deal, uh, that'll allow us another all-out attack there. Or I could pass to the protagonist and uh, have him use another Zeo here. There we go. Good stuff. Good stuff. And leveled up. You know, I'm just now realizing one thing I forgot to do is uh, I, I was supposed to get some Mad Bulls from <laughs> from the uh, from the dorm before I entered here because Mad Bulls recover your SP. And another one bites the dust. We're on a roll, guys. While we're at it, how about to spice things up every now and then? Like by changing up the leader. What? I was worried you'd s I was worried about what you'd say next. Don't you want to see how I'd run this whole shebang? Well, don't you? <laughs> I'm fine with whatever. Honestly. Wait, wouldn't it be wise for a change in command in the middle of ex an expedition? We're making steady progress under Zeller's lead, so let's continue as we have been. <laughs> fine, sure, I guess. But I'm pretty sure I could just take down all the enemies here all by myself. Chill out, Junpei. If you're not careful, it won't be long till you get hurt. Takeda's right. We can expect another strong enemy to appear. Don't let your guard down as we proceed. Okay, whatever. Guess there's always next time. All right. You know, Junpei's been so quiet. We can hear our footsteps echo. Hey, did I hear another pair of footsteps? Psych. Jinbei's been making comments about uh, Yukari's seeming jealousy, but uh, he seems to be uh, just a tad jealous himself, if I'm gonna be honest. Maybe I'm overthinking it, though. So here we've got uh, more lock chests. Here's a nice little detail about the lock chests. You can see the number of locks on them that correspond to the amount of Twilight Fragments you have to spend to open them. Uh, I'm gonna see how much 
I can get done without uh, using the Twilight Fragments on the clocks. We may be able to open them all before uh, we leave Tartarus for tonight. Before we uh, go on, let me use up some of those Soul Drops I've been getting to top off my uh, SP a little bit. And let's use uh, some of our Life Stones to just recover ourselves a little bit more for safety than anything if we get into any new encounters or additional encounters as we go along. Huh, well, well. The shadows on this floor are much weaker than you. This may be a good opportunity to try the Rush Command. Rushing can be greatly useful if you're trying to move through a floor without spending too much time in battle. When you choose Rush, all party members will default to their basic weapon attacks in rapid succession. While this isn't the most tactically involved strategy, it will allow you to move much faster through combat encounters. Rush is a command that works decently well in uh, FES and Vanilla, but in Portable and Reload, where you aren't upgrading your weapons as often because they kind of suck in these versions of the game, that's not really something I use too often. It's just the standard auto battle, and uh, it's not any different from what we saw in FES, except, like I said, it's kind of terrible in comparison. Alright, let's move along and uh, hit this guy. We're almost done with Tartarus for the night. You know, doing that battle just got me a, an important thing to learn there. Uh, in Persona 3 FES and Portable, if you defeat an enemy on your first turn, or your first action, rather... We have to head back. <laughs> no, she's fine, she's fine. You will always get shuffle time? That is not the case in Reload. I just uh, did rush because that's what the game wanted me to do, and it was just a couple of cowardly Mayas to make sure that it works. And uh, it didn't... Ooh, hey, a rare form. Let's get this guy. Oh, God, I keep hitting that. Oh, God, he's, he might get away. What, what am I hitting? Oh, God. What? Ah, I don't know what button I'm hitting. Ah, that's uh, that's actually really annoying. Am I hitting the start button by accident? <laughs> ah, I, I've heard of Fat Finger, but this is ridiculous. Jesus. Get a crit, Yukari. No crits. Unfortunate. Hopefully we can finish this guy off. It's, you're not guaranteed to uh, defeat the Wealth Hands. In fact, uh, in FES and Portable, there is a chance the Wealth Hands will escape before you even get a chance to do anything against them, which is really frustrating when it happens. Alright, we got him once. Okay, he didn't run that time. We're also fast enough to get an action before uh, he gets a chance to go. Okay. Come on, Yukari, hit this guy. There we go. Easy peasy. Kind of unfortunate that we didn't get with the all-out attack, though, because we can get shuffle time on them. Okay, what the heck am I hitting that, uh... First you got no floor 18, no, uh... Uh, da, da, da. I don't know what I was hitting that, uh... Ah, I must have been... I don't know how I was clicking the left stick. Uh, let me see here. How many uh, Twilight Fragments do we have? We did get another one from a podium, so let's open this one. And that gets us another Pixie Dust Talisman. Kind of a waste, but whatever. Aye aye, Captain Junpei. Seems like he's just kind of taking command by default. Uh, let's uh, sneak up on and whack this guy. Sometimes you gotta puff yourself up a little bit. Junpei understands that concept. Alright, just a little bit more to go. Uh, shouldn't be too far until the next floor. Wish I was getting more uh, money from the treasure chests here since we don't get uh, more treasure as the night goes on. As we're exploring Tartarus, I mean, I, the floors are set for the night, and there's not going to be any more treasure, unlike uh, FES and Portable, where we can just keep refreshing the floors to get as much treasure as we want. I was talking about how the uh, card of coins level 3 is a lame upgrade over level 2. The level 2 that I just got... Ooh, power band. Let's give that to Junpei. Every little bit of strength counts for Junpei. But uh, the card, the coin card level 2 that I got from that encounter just gave me uh, 1,700 yen, like the coin card 3 we got earlier. So yeah, really uh, lousy uh, step up the uh, card of coins 3 is. Man, this uh, goes on for quite a bit longer. Uh, in Persona 3 FES and Persona 3 Portable, we actually would already be at the uh, end of Fable. Goes on for a little bit longer in Reload, though. Not that I mind too, too much. More opportunities to get money, get vendor trash, and get items. Slowly but surely getting all the money I need, though in that case I only got a skill card for my efforts. Let's hope this guy provides something better. Perfecto. Keep saying that, Junpei. I appreciate it. Is that treasure? Also, we've gotten strong enough at this point that I can take out a Grave Beetle with uh, 
two blasts of Garu and uh, two all-out attacks, so that is very convenient. Just want to uh, aggro that shadow a little bit and hopefully get him to expose his back like so. No, it didn't, Yukari. We didn't get any money out of that. Man, we're getting bans like crazy. This will actually be pretty handy, though, because uh, I can sell some of these for a decent amount of cash. Let's double back real quick and just make absolutely sure that there's no treasure that I missed. One nice thing about this version of Persona is that when there is something notable on the floor, like a rare or locked treasure chest, there will be that little uh, message on the side that will let you know that. Uh, let's ignore these guys for now and just uh, go up to the next floor. When I'm going to be doing a little bit of money farming, there don't appear to be any enemies on this floor. Wait, what's going on? There aren't any enemies on the next floor either. Ah, uh, these seem to be special floors. I'll need you to go through them for the investigation. All right, so let's uh, activate this teleporter. Hold on a moment. All right, the path ahead is safe. And I'm curious what's on the next floor. Please continue forward. So uh, Mitsuru is not going to let us use that one and instead forces us to continue onward, heading up to floor... Oh, God damn it! Sorry, Junpei. What's this? This floor? There's no mistaking it. Do you recall, Zeller? How I once told you Tartarus was separated into multiple areas by borders resembling rifts? I believe this is one of those border floors. I'm not sensing any enemies. Would you mind taking a look around? All right, let's do so. Looks like we got a chest over here. What's in this one? Old document, huh? The power supply expansion has been completed. What's unusual is the excess wattage. Why would an island with only a school on it need so much power? Interesting. Let's see. It seems to continue on upwards, but the path is blocked. Looks like there's no way to progress any further right now, so let's stop here for tonight. We've still managed to cover a lot of ground. Well done, everyone. Um... Guess that's it, then. But how are we going to get past this roadblock? Hmm. Tartarus changes every day, right? So maybe it won't be blocked off tomorrow night or something. No. Unfortunately, that logic doesn't seem to apply here. Some floors have fixed structures and layouts. This appears to be one of them. Some other factors may have caused this. I'll look into it. <laughs> Guess we just gotta wait. Come on, let's bounce, Cullen. So, we've hit a border floor. As you ascend Tartarus, you will reach border floors that prevent you from progress progressing any further. As there is no way to dispel these barriers, you'll have to wait for the right time. Alright, alright, I can live with that. Let's uh, return to base for right now. Are you ready to return to the entrance? Let's head back. But we're actually not done with Tartarus for tonight in Reload, because I have to get all the money that I've been using in the previous videos. So, real quick, I'm just going to do... Ugh, excuse me, I'm just going to do some farming. I'm pretty close to the 30k marker, and then I'll be able to sell a bunch of stuff to uh, top off there. So uh, let's uh, just uh, real quick uh, get the rest of the money that I need. And I can uh, use uh, my uh, Twilight Fragments to uh, open up the chests I had to skip over as well once I'm done with this. So let me take care of that. Cutting back to FES now, because the floor for... Uh, Fable only go or the floors for Fable only go up to floor 16 and as Mitsuru remarks our dead end is here Good work return to the entrance one thing that I really like here is that the barrier is actually just a stack of uh, School desks and chairs. I don't know why that's just kind of funny to me Honestly, I do kind of like the amount of detail uh, put into these backgrounds here a description of the document can be read in the dictionary So yeah, we have to go to our little compendium here But yeah, uh, we don't get too many opportunities to take in like the surreal backgrounds. I don't know why but like fifth gen and sixth gen games like they always have like these expansive 3d spaces that you're just like they're modeled out but they're completely uninteractable or maybe they've got like a pre-rendered background i don't know why it's always a striking visual thinking of a uh, wet dry world in super mario 64 right now anyway like the game said the old document goes into our dictionary here, so we can read it here. The electricity is hooked up, but why do they need so much? There's only a school on this island, much like it said in Persona 3 Reload. Nothing too fancy there, but now we can return to the entrance. Now, we're actually going to take care of something real quick before we cut back to Reload once more. Or maybe we won't. I'm, uh, I'll be honest, I've kind of forgotten... Uh, how, what I said at the end of the reload segment, and it's been far too long since I've reviewed that uh, commentary, and I'm too lazy slash busy to review it before I record this segment, but that's neither here nor there. Fe feel free to roast me in the comments if I say anything stupid. Anyway, let's go to Elizabeth's request, because we pulled off a hat trick in this Tartarus venture. So, we've completed her beetle shell request. Aren't you curious why I made such a request? Well, I shall leave it to your imagination. Please accept your reward. 
And we get 12,000 yen. Very nice. You seem to have completed another request. Please give me a moment to check. Well done. You managed to retrieve the first old document in time. Have you already read it? It's quite interesting. If not, then I definitely recommend you take a look. Please accept your reward. And we get another bead chain. Very helpful. I love having these for boss fights. Super useful items. You seem to have completed another request. Please give me a moment to check. Oh my. I've never tried a muscle drink before. Is it safe? Well, you have my thanks. I look forward to tasting it. Careful, Elizabeth, occasionally it can poison you. But for that, we get three revival beads. You can buy muscle drinks for Aohige from Aohige Pharmacy for a thousand yen, and that essentially trades it in for three revival beads, which is uh, 3,600 yen if you buy them. So, pretty nice uh, discount on uh, three revival beads, really. Let's just take a look at the other requests we have here. Unfortunately, not too much else we can do at the moment. Uh, do take note of this date on this request. That date is the only day we can complete this request, so be sure to be mindful of that. Luckily, the schedule I have has these dates noted down, so there's little chance I'll forget them. And we will take this quest to take Elizabeth to Polonia Mall. One nice thing about the Elizabeth date requests is that they do not take up any time. These are new scenes that were added to Persona 3 FES, so, to make sure it doesn't screw up the schedule too much, these do not take any time to attend, and they get you a nice reward for doing them, so you should always make sure to do the Elizabeth dates. Alright, and that is where I'll leave it for FES. Alright, I did my money farming, got over 30k, and with all the stuff I have to sell, I can probably notch around 50k, which will be more than enough for uh, until the next time we have to go to Tartarus and reload. And I was able to do it without using up the second clock heal, so we can use our Twilight Fragments to open up these locked chests. This first one on floor 11 gives us a Poison Arrow Bow, a powerful new bow for Yukari. When you get a piece of equipment that is stronger than what, well, stronger in terms of attack power than what a party member is currently wielding, they will ask to equip it. We can give it to uh, Yukari. Yes, thanks, I'll take good care of it. And she'll just equip it right away. I actually kind of dislike this mechanic because it doesn't give you an opportunity to look at what the weapon can do before you get a chance to equip it on your party member. I think that's actually pretty annoying because uh, sometimes uh, the weapons I have on my party members, uh, it's usually I usually have them because they have a good ability or something. Uh, I really don't care too much to equip weapons purely on the basis of their attack power on, in portable and reload. And it's kind of annoying to just open up a chest and suddenly get asked, hey, can I equip this? And not even know what the hell is the weapon gonna do the poison bow and arrow is pretty intuitive at least it has a chance of poisoning the enemies with a normal physical attack not that i really care about that but hey it's kind of cool hell yeah let's check it out junpei open up this one right here and we get a hothead shirt hey a sick armor i think it'd bring out my inner charm you know yeah sure let's give it to uh junpei we could also equip it on ourselves Ah uh -huh, yeah, upgrade time, baby. Let's keep it rolling. Since Junpei was the one who asked to equip it, it probably uh, increases something that he's good at, which, no, not specifically. Uh, by the way, I didn't go over Freeze, what it does when you got inflicted with it. Now, in Persona 3, FES and Portable, I have no idea what the hell the Freeze status does. It doesn't seem to do anything. In Nocturne and Digital Devil Saga, it disabled your uh, physical resistances and made every single attack against you a critical hit. I don't know if it's supposed to work like that in FES and Portable, but it definitely doesn't. In Reload, it increases your susceptibility to being critically hit, though it does not guarantee them. And if you aren't attacked, it causes you to lose a turn. So it's a bit more useful in this game. Let's see, the Long Wakazashi. This is a sword for the main character. Let's uh, equip this one. If I remember right, this one actually does have a pretty good ability that I care about. Oh no, magic plus one and agility plus one isn't that bad, but what I'm always hoping for when I get new weapons is plus HP. HP is so good to have. I love having a ton of extra HP. It's just one of the easiest ways to make sure uh, my main character has more survivability. But uh, with that taken care of, let's go to floor one, and to round out this video before we return to the distant future that I'm currently at in Reload, let's go to the Velvet Room. We have not yet visited the Velvet Room and Reload, so let's give Igor a chance to uh, give his pitch in this version of the game. Welcome to the Velvet Room. I have been anticipating your arrival. 
The time has come for you to wield your power. My role is to create new personas. By merging multiple persona cards together, they can be reborn into a new form. One could call it a fusion of personas. There is much hidden potential within your persona abilities. We've never had a guest show this much promise in the past. Indeed. And by establishing social links, you may be able to create even stronger personas as well. Oh, -ho. this shall prove to be most interesting. To that end, as you accumulate cards, please bring them to me. If you wish to learn more about fusing personas in greater detail, then come talk to me so that I may give you some hints. I will assist you to the best of my ability. Thank you for the uh, uh, suggestion there, Elizabeth. As you probably noticed, or maybe you didn't, is that Elizabeth in this version of the game doesn't actually mention how many personas there are to collect, uh, but the number is much greater in Reload. Kind of weird that they changed that, honestly, but whatever. You can borrow Igor's power to blah blah blah, this is where we fuse personas. And all the relevant tutorials have been added. However, one thing to note in Persona 3 Reload, uh, let me see, no, uh, we want to go to the fuse persona menus. One thing to note is that we have access to the Persona Compendium right now. We do not have access to this yet in uh, FES and Portable. We don't get access to this until May 9th in Persona 3 FES and Portable. So this is a nice little feature that we actually have immediate access to in Reload. That being said, I probably won't need it too, too much at the moment since uh, the schedules aren't that different at this point. I do just want to take a chance to run a quick fusion to hopefully show something off. Uh, let's see, what would be a good persona to make here? I want to make something that's strong, honestly. But uh, I don't know if there's anything really good we can make at this moment. I would like uh, to get a magician one, though. So I think, uh, honestly, fusing Opsaras and uh, Silky... Well, actually, it wouldn't be that good. Uh, I don't really want to fuse off Orpheus, because it doesn't feel like a good decision at this point. Hmm. Uh, well, then let's just fuse something that I don't care about to get something new. Uh, we'll fuse uh, Angel and uh, Fornius to get Inugami. Uh, we don't have any uh, social links uh, unlocked at this point in uh, Reload, so we don't get uh, good fusion bonuses from this. And we'll just give this guy some elemental coverage. But the reason I wanted to do a fusion here, even if it's something I don't care about, is to show that in Persona 3 Reload, you can simply pick the skills that the resultant Persona gets. You don't have to rely on random chance to get it. The first time you do a fusion in Persona 3 Reload, you have to watch the animation. And uh, the main character just got headshotted with cards there. I am Inugami. If you desire vengeance, then summon me and I shall seek it for you. Cool, cool. So, not a Persona I really care about, but a good opportunity to demonstrate fusion in Persona 3 Reload. Like FES and Portable, we'll be doing plenty of fusion as the game progresses. Is there anything else you can assist me with? No, thank you, Elizabeth. See you guys next time. Alright, speaking of seeing them next time, that's where we're gonna end this video. When we return, we will be in the far future that we actually reached in the rest of the videos up to this point because uh, I recorded this way ahead of time, so I'm not sure what part I'll be up to when I actually uh, show off this part of Persona 3 Reload, but that's neither here nor there. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, though, goodbye. I don't dispute the doubts you've outlined, uh, but it's my right to waste your time. Uh.